Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. What does that mean, Daniel? That means whiskeys. That means Rex is gonna tell you what that means. Wait, no, you while I pour. You had a whole nother week. Dude, do you realize what happened in the last week? You didn't do anything. I did everything. And Alex and Dan were there. They watched me do everything. <laughs> but I did everything. You know what I'm picturing? I'm picturing. Here's what I'm picturing. Are you ready? This is what just flashed through my head. You in the middle of the room, like one of those gaming competitions where they're sitting on a stage playing video games while people watch, you know? And you're feverishly like, it's like headphones. And every once in a while you lean back like this and Alex squirts some water in your mouth like from a boxing ring, you know? And then, and then, and then Dan reaches over and like pats your head for the sweat. And you're just going, going, and you're like, bite! Someone brings over a chicken sandwich. <laughs> like, I don't even take a chicken sandwich bite. You just keep going for like 72 hours. That's entirely accurate. Yeah. Because I did everything. <laughs> uh, Rare Whiskey Friday, we're going to go through and get first impressions on several different whiskeys. These aren't necessarily large brands. Sometimes they are. More often than not, these are going to be your smaller craft distilleries without a lot of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review. Thank you to the Magnificent Bastard to sent the whiskey. This is a gift from the Magnificent Bastard, Dan Lorek. Dan Lorek, you Magnificent Bastard. This is from New Liberty, which is a Pennsylvania distillery, yeah. but they're making a Bloody Butcher Bourbon. Yeah. It, from what I've read, and I don't know if this is true, but it, se oh, it seems like the only corn in this is Bloody Butcher. Oh. So you know how Iron was doing like accent Bloody Butcher oh, yeah. corn? And you can tell totally tell the difference. Even yeah. with like a 5% accent, it makes it a different animal. In theory, <laughs> this is all Bloody Butcher corn and then malt and rye. That, now... Which sounds expensive. Wait a minute. So... Like like the fifty one percent or more is bloody butcher, right? And then malted rye, right? Okay, bloody butcher. That's not a cheap grain. Yeah, that's an yeah yeah. You're spending so, some money. That's serious, and it's nine months old. Right there, printed on the label, wow. aged nine months. That's commitment. Yeah, right. That's not like a handwriting. I guess we're just gonna do nine months. Yeah, that's a choice. That's a choice. But the color at nine months. Are you seeing this color? That that's is impressive. And color. in Pennsylvania. Wow. I wonder if they're using like small barrels, right? You reap what you sow, so make it count. It could be small barrels. I I, it would not surprise me because that level of tannin and darkness in nine months and, yeah. in a northern climate. Yeah, yeah, well even, yeah. I mean, if it was a larger barrel, even in Texas, it would be a little, pretty difficult to get that kind oh, of color. This is like dark chocolate s'mores. That burnt marshmallow, <laughs> yeah. the graham notes, the grain dustiness of corn, yep. but there's a lot of chocolate. I don't know if I would go so far as milk chocolate, even though there are some like light creamy notes, but there's a slight zing to that nose that see, makes me think bitterness. See the creamy zing, the creamy zing. Um, it's like uh, it's almost like a like a citrus zest on top of a cream note. Yeah, this is a it's nice reminding me of a dark chocolate uh, with the with the uh, what's the, when you get the pepper. Um, is it? It's a cayenne pepper. Oh yeah. Have you ever had dark chocolate and cayenne pepper? I have. Like the way it smells. Don't don't bite into it yet. Just that zingy peppery note. Uh, maybe. So what's interesting is how much new make I'm not getting on this oh, yeah. nose. No. This is not a new makey nose. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. Ooh. Oh wow. It's a little simple. Baking spices show up for me. 47, so you proved it down to 47.5. Absolutely, the rye arrives. Get, uh, cinnamon and graham cracker and this herbal quality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's shockingly drinkable for a nine-month-old whiskey. Yeah. That is really nice. Really nice. What was the proof on here? 47.5. 47.5, decent proof. It's got uh, bite to it at the end, though. Man. I, I'm saying cinnamon and to get some baking I spices. Take that. The graham cracker. Yeah. And then... Mm, it's very some holidays. Honey. some honey in there. Oh, it's lovely. I'm some fine herbal, with that. The herbal quality. Damn respectable for a nine month whiskey. Well done. And damn respectable for them to go that all in on what is, you know, by all accounts, a very expensive corn. Yeah. There's a reason. Yellow Dent. And they're using local too. Yellow Dent mm -hmm. corn is what the vast majority of distilleries are using whenever they're making bourbon and, and corn heavy whiskeys. It's very, very. 
easy to get your hands on, um, affordable. The heirloom varietals and the you know like little special strains of corn that are much more rare. You're going to pay for that rarity. And uh, Bloody Butcher, from what I understand, at least with us looking into it and distillers that we've talked to, you spend money whenever you go all in on one of these fancy, fancy grains. In this case, of corn. These are three whiskeys from Titan, uh, or not Titan, yet. Patron Saint William Shepherd. William Shepherd. You patron saint of whiskey. <laughs> Conchie. So you're hitting the label. I like it. You're not gonna get any you're not gonna get anything on the label. Here. It's a half step down. Your glass is a half step down. It's Jaws. <laughs> All right, so. We're gonna need a bigger glass. <laughs> <laughs> that was so well timed. All right, Grand Teton Distillery. Yeah. Uh, this is a story in Idaho, but practically in Wyoming. Um, if I went to the website uh, to it, look. Is it Teton or Teton? It's Teton. I think it's Teton. Like no, it's Grand, Teton. The Grand Teton Mountains. Look, I, I can't piss people off with pronunciations if you correct me on camera. Grand Titty whiskey. <laughs> That's not. Is that helping? I'm helping. No, you're not. I got helping. your back, bro. No, I no, got your no. Back. Look, the Grand Tetons is was uh, well known as the the place that Chris Ladow loved to play concerts at the Teton. Yeah. It's a Teton. Yeah. It's a Teton. No. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. I went to the website, and honestly, you know when you Google uh, and you get a search result, it has the title of the website plus whatever tagline they want to put in there? Who keeps oh, such a rookie maneuver? She's texting me here. Maybe Glenn. Oh, sh Hey, I'm in the middle of a shoot. Can I call you back? I have Meeting? A, I have a phone appointment. Ah, uh, <laughs> was that Glenn? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> so you usually shoot at 10. I know, but I had a meeting at 10. Oh. Yeah. Because I showed up here. I'm in the 10 o'clock. Okay, here we go. We're almost done. All right, so here's the thing. Yeah. Grand Teton, if you Google search Grand Teton, yeah. it said the results that come and say Grand Teton Distillery, yeah. vodka, best vodka, 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 vodka. Vodka people. Yeah, won all these awards, vodka, vodka, vodka. Okay. And so we got a bunch of whiskey from a distillery that they, they is have, most proud of their vodka. They have vodka awards? Well, evidently. It's called, yeah, it tastes like nothing. <laughs> and it's alcoholic. Wait, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm legit. I'm legitimately. I'm not like I'm not hating. I'm legitimately curious. Like, what do judges at vodka competitions? What are they? If you can taste anything, you don't want to let in a medal. So, what if you just put in some water? I was like, this is the smoothest. Well, shit. have a bu yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the you gotta have a hint of a burn. Yeah, smoothest thing. You just ever I don't know it'd be if you put it a label that it was 50% alcohol, yeah. but it was really like 5% alcohol. Right. And then when you drink it, they're like, this is so fucking smooth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, I was like, well, why didn't I not? So I looked a little deeper on the label because it didn't say this anywhere on their website. Yeah. But they, they labeled correctly, distilled in Indiana, aged and bottled by. Okay. So we're about to drink a trio of MGP whiskey. Okay. Uh, the 21% rye, the yeah. same one we release. Because this is a different color. Yeah. The same one we release. Okay. Right? The uh, wheat version of their bourbon, which we just released. Okay. And their weeded whiskey, which we've uh, gotten taste samples of but never released a bottle of. Okay. What, 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 what so let's they, start with... What do they proof it at? Uh, 88, oh. 88, and 80. Oh, yeah, this one's 40% ABV. Yeah. Um, so this is Eleanor, aged in Idaho. Okay. Right? And proofed down to 88. So it's, um, the softness is the thing that jumps out to me. Because mm -hmm. I'm used to this flavor set being not nearly this. Because in Texas, when, even MGP, when it, when it shows up in our barrels, right. it gets rich and molassesy from the heat. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There's that cola. Yeah. Herbal note. And then it's like um, like a dark honey, some oakiness back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a damn good. Actually, the MGP. More, more flavor than nose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It tastes significantly better than the nose. Even at that low proof, more flavor than nose. All right, dump that or somewhere in your mouth. Okay, that's fine. Did I do it right? Yep. Nailed it. Okay, so. 
This is the weeded bourbon, okay. which we just got a couple of barrels of, and we're, we're about to re try to release one here soon. We're not sure what we're gonna call it. But I really loved the weeded samples from MGP when they came in. Mm -hmm. They didn't smell anything like this. So... Oh, this is a little bit more... I like wonder... <laughs> Look, see that streak? Yeah. That was me doing a swirling while reading, and, and, it, and my glass and flung tilted out. and just flung out <laughs> sideways. This is a little bit more of like a rosy, rosewood, like aromatic. Wow, this is nothing like the weeded barrels that we have in our barrel house that have been there for four or five months well, now. Well, the, the thing, though, those are, those are single barrels. And what we know from single barrels is yeah. they can vary wildly. Yeah. I wonder how many barrels went into these. Oh, that one sort of is invisible compared to the rye. The wheat, wheat softened everything down but and filled in all of the cracks. But the nose is more present than... The first one yeah the 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 first one the nose isn't really big but the, the flavors there this one it's a big like rosy aromatic you know um kind of like what is that almost potpourri yeah i was about to say pier one mm -hmm. like a pier yeah. one type of not quite wicker but getting no, that type of nose yeah um and then on the taste though that doesn't really show up as much as you would be led to believe by the nose now I'm most interested in trying that wheat whiskey mm -hmm. because we've gotten samples from MGP of the wheat whiskey, but we've never actually yeah, gotten the, a barrel. So before we move on, just on the taste, this presents as just kind of a general sweetness. Yeah. Like a general softer, you know, some like a sugary whiskey flavors, a little bit of oak back there, but it's like, uh, yeah. I right, thank you. you. Made me shoot whiskeys right before my very important phone meeting that I forgot about. <clears throat> All right, and this one is the what? This is the wheat mash. The wheat mash. Now, what I don't, they said a wheat mash whiskey. So, what I'm wondering is, was this wheat whiskey but in used oak? Oh. What is that? What am I getting? Are you getting like a slight soap? I am. Yeah. I'm totally getting a slight soapy note. Yeah. And that makes me wonder if they crash proofed it right before bottling. So, you mean proofing it down very quickly? Very quickly and then immediately bottling it. Because that's, that's uh, we don't know. Yeah. But in, in vodka, that's a non-issue. Yeah, because there's in, not as many long, yeah. In whiskey, if you're going to proof down a whiskey, if you proof it down too quickly, what can sometimes it's happen? It's called saponification. So it's when the fast interaction of water with whiskey creates these new chemical notes responsible for like a soapy note and soapy taste. I haven't tasted it yet. You can avoid that by slow adding water so that the water has time to mix and meld with the whiskey. But I can't tell if that's just a grain note versus saponification. Mmm, it's there in the... It doesn't show up nearly as much as on the nose. Only on the finish. It's not in the mid-palate flavor profile. It's just this lingering finish of like, mm, that's a little... The, the main thing I get is a, like a watery simple syrup and a mm -hmm. cherry. Yeah. A watery yeah. simple syrup and a cherry note. That carries through and then the finish. For you said the finish was a little bit of a soap mm -hmm. nose. For me, it was just on that initial... A flush of flavors and then it dissipated gave way to a little bit of cherry well these are shockingly similar uh, even though they're totally different i mean they're definitely different whiskeys right but they all have the same kind of you know like we find that note in balcon it's like oh this is a balcon oh, whiskey yeah. oh, yeah. it's like i feel like oh yeah i can recognize the distillate okay does that make sense the style and approach these two more than this one for me mm -hmm. This one still has this one tastes more like the herbal bourbon young bourbons that we've had okay for me uh, so the, the standout for this Rare Whiskey Friday. For me, it was actually this one. For me, it was honestly. Oh, oh, no, no, sorry. This oh, nine, not of these. This nine month bastard. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, that's, uh, going in for nine months, 47.5 ABV. I'm, I'm switching back to that one. That's like, uh, it's a really damn good for nine months. Oh, wait a minute. Now going back, I get this like black tea pine. I didn't get it the first time. You get a, like a pine? Slight pine note. Oh, very slight. Very slight. It's very slight. But that taste is still really nice. Oh. Yeah. Really dig it. Here's the fighting stealing drink. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. Steal me, steal your livers. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us.